Well, good evening, ladies, lasses, and lassos. Welcome to the Clicky Thicky Wiki Show, where we do all the clickies on the thickies. That just sounds like a show where we, like, <laughs> react to butts. We're not <laughs> reacting to butts today. Subscribe to my only fa- No, we don't- we don't have that either. Anyway, today we're gonna do something beautiful. I found a glorious subreddit called r slash traumatize them back, which is a beautiful twist of, like, petty revenge. Have you ever had people that treat you really poorly, are weirdly entitled, or asks oddly invasive questions, and they think it's totally normal? And you wish you had the perfect clap back in the moment, the kind of stuff you think up in the shower like six months later. Well, we are in luck, because some people actually did have those perfect clapbacks, and that is what this entire video is all about. Enjoy. Mwah. Nurse said I was squeamish because I hadn't had children yet. I traumatized her by telling her about the illegal medical testing I endured as a child. This happened a couple of weeks ago. My fertility doctor ordered some blood tests for me, 34F, and I went to my local healthcare clinic to get them done. I have trypanophobia, which I disclosed to the nurse who would be taking my blood. I always need to warn them, because I can handle myself okay for about 10 minutes or so. But if the blood draw takes too long, I am likely to vomit and or faint. Oh, I can relate to this. This is just how my phobia for needles and stuff work. It's usually fine in the moment, but if you're exposed to it like for one minute, two minutes, it's like, okay, no, no, down I go. <laughs> I once very embarrassingly threw up on the nurse's shoes. I read this as in the nurse's shoe first. That would have been so funny. Oh God. You can have it back. The nurse looks at me like they don't believe me and asks if I have children. Oh, I hate that when people don't take it seriously. Last time I had the blood test, my doctor was actually very pleasant about it. So I got to sit in this chair that they like flip backwards so you don't get lightheaded. And then I had a fruit to eat afterwards, so I had decent blood sugar and stuff, and I got to sit there for a couple of minutes, and then I was all good. So like, if you are lucky and get a good nurse or doctor to do this, it can be a quite decent experience. But yeah, no, I can, uh, I can relate, fam. I say no. Keep in mind that the lady labels for my blood test have the word INFERTILITY in big bold letters, but whatever. <laughs> the nurse goes on about how I won't be the squeamish once I have kids. With, with that label on the... Alright. I am pretty pissed off at this point, as I already feel a bit woozy, so I say very coldly, I didn't used to be squeamish about needle as a kid, which is why the doctors in my home country volunteered me for medical testing and training. My parents got paid while I was used as a human pincushion for medical trainees. I specifically remember the day they taught students how to draw blood from my neck. It is wild that they allow this, like allow interns and trainees to do this on kids. It's one thing if you have, you know, adult volunteers and be like, hey, here's a hundred bucks and, you know, some students will like poke in the arm or something a few times. Okay, it's, you know, voluntarily. It's an adult doing it for themselves. But like to give up a child for this. I think I had something similar that triggered my own phobia for this kind of stuff. I was like, you know, six, seven or something like that. And I had an iron deficiency in my blood. So they repeatedly took me to the hospital to do tests and stuff and give me like weird pills for it. And they would always draw way too much blood. And one time I had like some newbie person who took like the wrong needle that was too thin and kept poking in and out. I wouldn't be surprised if that's where the phobia comes from, but hard to tell at this point, but Jesus Christ, man. Not comparable to like illegal testing, but like treat kids decently in like healthcare scenarios because it can really trigger some kind of phobic stuff. It's really bad. The nurse turned white and proceeded to wordlessly draw the blood. Because they took so long, I ended up throwing up, which they had to clean up. Yes! Payback! <laughs> Maybe next time they will learn to listen to their patients. I mean, in one way, that's one way to do it, right? They certainly learn their lesson if you throw up at them. <laughs> it's like an octopus, you know? It's a defense mechanism. I had a recent experience where I where I got a cut on my on my finger, uh, a pretty pretty like decent one, and it feels so weird because you're like, how how is this my body's reaction? You're like, okay, I can't stand up any longer <laughs> because of the phobia. But I still have to, like, patch it up. So you, like, lay down with band-aids and stuff, with your legs in the air, trying to be like, okay, I got this. Like, bodies and brains, man. Oh my god, what are they doing sometimes? I read in a book a while ago, I think it might have been Homus Deus, that talked about mini computers that they could implant into humans that could completely alter like brain patterns and stuff. So you could install this in people that had, for example, really bad existential dread, or for example, hyper intense depression, that kind of stuff. And this computer basically just 
turned it off. Absolutely amazing. If I could install a switch like that in my own brain for my phobia, just God, I would do it in an instance. That sounds absolutely amazing. The brain is not logical sometimes, dear God. Karen said, Boys will be boys. So I returned the favor. More than 20 years ago, when me and my sisters were still in elementary, our mom took us to a shopping mall for clothes and groceries. Major supermarket was attached to the mall. After everything was over, we stopped by the bookstore, where us kids picked whatever books we wanted while she was picking educational books for both of us. The bookstore was also selling some physical discs for various software including games. While both of us were looking into games we wanted, a little boy of our age came next to us, opened up one of the discs, and poked my sister in the eye. My sister immediately started to cry her eyes out, and my mom rushed over to see what was happening. She scolded the little boy after hearing what happened, to which he got upset and went to grab his Karen of a mother. I poked someone's eye out. And I couldn't get away with it? Outrageous. What a poopy child. Karen comes over and demands to know who yelled at her son. The two ladies began to get into a shouting match. My mom argued that the kid had no reason to hurt my sister like that and should be taught better. Karen argued, boys will be boys. All right, all right. Boys will be boys is something you say, for example, when you and your quirky neighborhood friends are trying to reconstruct a local abandoned shopping cart into a little car. That's kind of the rascalities that is boys will be boys, you know? Not like poking people eyes out or sexually harassing people, you know? The, no. And that he doesn't know any better. Then teach him better, dear Karen. My God. She asked my mom, why are you overreacting? I decided enough was enough. I did a frontal kick on the kid as hard as I can, making him fall on his butt. I saw there was a nice footprint imprinted on his shirt. He began to let out the most annoying cry I have ever heard. The Karen quickly rushed over to her little turd and began shouting at me. I looked her in the eye and said, Boys will be boys, why are you overreacting? She tried to argue more, but her friend or sister held her back and ushered her out of the store. We went to get burgers and fries afterwards, but my mom also lectured me about how violence isn't the answer. <sighs> I don't know, man. Like, sure, you shouldn't hit people, but if someone punches you first, I don't know, man, then kind of bets are off, to be honest. Me being a little sprouty elementary kid didn't care and rode that hype train for weeks. I salute you. I don't care what your mom says every once in a while. <laughs> violence is the answer. There are few cases where violence should be the first response, but we do not have to accept abuse by being pacifists. Neither should our children. This is actually like an interesting side tangent into ethics debates, for example, because usually, you know, violence isn't an ethical option. But there is also the thing in ethics where you start tolerating intolerance, if that makes sense. If the passivity or like how much leeway you give a specific person or element or, you know, organization, whatever it is, to the point they start doing more harm, then you can argue that you can do the less ethical option in the moment because it causes less harm in the long term, if you know what I mean. So that's kind of an interesting side tangent. But yeah, I agree. Like you shouldn't let bullies get away with being bullies. That's not the point of it. Like don't hit people. But you know, self-defense should be considered fine. <laughs> And in this case, it's just kids being rowdy. <laughs> like if, <laughs> if I was a kid and someone poked me in the eye and like my friend or something poked the other kid back, I'd be like, yeah, hell yeah, <laughs> that's a good friend. <laughs> it didn't look pretty enough four hours after my mom died. This happened a really long time ago now, but I have never seen anyone run away from a situation quite so quickly. And sometimes I do wonder what the guy thought or if he learned his lesson. So my mom had been terminal and was in hospice care in our home. We knew time was limited. However, when I'm upset, the first thing to go to hell is my sleep schedule. I had only slept two hours that night and hadn't been getting much more sleep than that for the past few weeks. But she ended up passing slightly before four in the morning that this took place. So after she passed, I decided I needed caffeine to get through the day. So when the nearest gas station opened up at 8 a.m., I headed over there for some energy drinks. I likely did look a bit of a mess. It's easy to tell when I'm tired, and I was wearing college merch that was much bigger than my usual size. I get out of my car and start shuffling through my clothes. I couldn't remember which gigantic pocket I had put my wallet in. While I did that, this man pulls up to a pump in a very shiny car. I don't remember what he looked like beyond that he looked a bit like a very put together game show host. This man turns to me, he was 20 feet away so this was all said loudly, and says, 
It's a shame someone so pretty can't improve everyone's day with a smile. I burst out crying, ugly crying with a sobbing mouth thing and shaking. Just went from standing there hoping I hadn't left my wallet at home to bawling in a mostly empty parking lot. I did manage to yell something like, I am sorry I am not freaking pretty enough for you when my mom died four hours ago. Dude turned on his heel and left. Didn't pump gas, didn't go inside for a coffee, didn't apologize, just got in his car and left. I was saved from standing in the parking lot sobbing by a woman who I think was jogging and heard what the man and I said to each other and the employee of the gas station who were very kind. That is absolutely awful. I do hope they learned a lesson to like maybe not be so weirdly invasive with people's days. People are allowed to have bad days, especially when they're going through tragedy. Stuff like this always struck me so odd, like, you should smile more. You don't know what happened during their day, or maybe you're not just entitled to their smile. <laughs> What the shit? If I ever make a tier list of like the weirdest ways to open conversations with strangers, this is definitely gonna be up there. I was getting tampons, officer. So I got pulled over one night coming back from Walmart. I definitely deserved a ticket, speeding, but the cop was asking for too much information. It was late, I was cramping. I just wanted to be home so I could stop bleeding in my pants and eat my cookies. Of course, the typical question, do you know how fast you were going? Big sigh. Yes, sir, 65. Where are you coming from? All right, fair question, I guess. It's 12 a.m. Walmart, officer. What were you getting at Walmart? Um, okay, why do you need to know that? I just want to get home, my guy, but since you asked, I was getting tampons. Do you want to see them? <laughs> His eyes got wide and he walked away without saying a word. <laughs> Came back to give me my ticket and he couldn't make eye contact. <laughs> Most expensive box of tampons I have ever bought. However, the look on that guy's face was priceless. Yeah, I feel like a lot of people can relate to this when you have, for example, a public servant or anything like that that starts asking way too many questions about things that aren't really any of their business. I remember, not, not quite as intimate, of course, but I remember I got similar questions regarding a taxation topic with like the business I run, like small company, like one employee, you know, that kind of stuff. And they started asking like, well, what kind of what kind of server backups do you run? I'm like, first off, this isn't really any of your business because <laughs> you know, what I choose to do and how I say my files is my business. <laughs> And if it's not in the paperwork, that means I paid for it myself, which is more expensive and already taxed money. So that shouldn't be an issue. Like, no one is hiding anything. Secondly, <laughs> it's literally like... It's... Wait. Do <laughs> I have one with the cable long enough? And you want to see my backup servers? Like, it's this. <laughs> That's my backup server. <laughs> not sponsored, sadly. Very innocent example, of course, compared to the story. But sometimes people just ask questions that are, like, beyond what they should be asking. And it just reaches kind of ridiculous territory. It is a little wild, isn't it? My kid can die if I don't. I was waiting to check in at a dentist today, and some old lady started, hmm, and such. We're in Florida, and I am wearing a mask. Unusual, I guess, but most people just mind their own business and leave me alone. There is a few, however, who are pains about it. She looked at me and asked why I was wearing that thing on my face. Oh, did they also call it like a face diaper? <laughs> Wouldn't be surprised. Why am I out and about if I am that scared? God forbid someone tries to live their life. <laughs> Jesus Christ. That's such a dumb question as well. Why are you wearing a seatbelt if you're not scared of it? This is common sense, y'all. God, Jesus, you can have the same thing like helmet when biking. If you're not scared, why are you even biking? No, no, I'm not scared of biking. This is just common sense. I don't like brain injuries. I have breast cancer, and I am not feeling great today. Mine's not terrible, considering. My son also has cancer, and his is bad. Grade 4 brain cancer. I just looked at her and said, my oncologist says cancer patients need to be careful about dental care. Plus, my kid can die if I don't. She turned white as a sheet and left me alone the rest of the time we were in the waiting room together. I'm pretty sure the dental hygienist who came out to get me was purposefully a bit louder than normal, asking about how my son was doing. Oh my god, that's so wild. Yeah, some people really need to just mind their business, especially about things that are so silly. It doesn't affect you in the least. Or maybe one other thing that they should consider is that maybe they're wearing the mask, not even for their own sake, but for your sake. I have done that in the past. When I'm feeling a bit iffy, I have a sneeze or runny nose or something, but there's like a mandatory errand you need to go. And sometimes you put on a mask so you don't cough on strangers 
and get people sick for no reason, you know? <laughs> It can just be for your sake as well, lady. Why are you being such an overcomplicated butthole? <laughs> Maybe you should be wearing a face diaper because that sure is a lot of shit coming out of your mouth. Ho ho ho! Got him! Comment on my butt at work? Let me make this uncomfortable for us both. I was working as a front-end cashier for a local grocery store. It was around the time of my lunch break, so my line was closed off after this last customer. Grizzled, 60-70-year-old bearded guy. We'll call him BG for bearded guy. <laughs> Me, early 20s, feminine cashier. As I finish ringing up his purchase and he goes to slide his card, the card machine doesn't work. I tell him to keep swiping until it beeps. We were mid-change to new sales systems, so this was a common occurrence. I bend under under my till to clean and organize while he's sliding his card. As I'm bent over, his card dings. Sweet, let's wrap this up so I can go eat. Instead, ding, bearded guy. Oh, I liked it when you did that. I am still under the till. I roll my eyes and then inspiration strikes. Petty, petty inspiration. I come up. Did what, sir? Well, it liked it when you bent over. Why would it like it that I bent over? It's a, it's a boy card. Boys like it when girls bend over. But why? Well, they just do. Me gleeful on the inside at this point. But why? <laughs> I don't understand. Bearded guy getting flustered. His face gets red. He mumbles. Uh, Ma'am, uh, you're, you're making me a little uncomfortable. I drop the dumb act. I lean forward across the check stand and look right into his eyes. And how do you think I feel when a man makes an unwanted comment on my backside while I am at work? He's 20 shades of red, stammering. Uh, 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 I meant no disrespect, it was supposed to be a compliment. I put on a very stern face. It was disrespectful. Please don't comment on women's bodies when they work. Uh, I, I'm so sorry, it won't happen again. He collects his bags and leaves without another word. Gleeful vindication? Good, now maybe you won't go and harass other people at their freaking jobs. I think stuff like this surprisingly often falls in a very similar category to bullies claiming that I wasn't bullying, it's only a joke, it's fun, haha, <laughs> look, I am laughing. But they completely miss the point that this is not necessarily how it's received on the other end. It's an incredibly similar excuse. It's not harassment if it's complimenting. Oh, that's your nice butt right there. Mm, time and place, time and place. If you say that to your partner in the bedroom, that's one thing. <laughs> If you say it to a random person working, not that great. I was once at a bar where some douche was hitting on a lesbian woman. And when she told him she was lesbian, he said, Ah, oh, you just haven't had the right pay, pay yet. Hearing this, I, a 6'2", 280-pound straight man, began aggressively hitting on him. The guy is like, Hey, bro, I'm not gay. To which I responded, Are you sure? Maybe you just haven't had the right pee, -pee yet. Oh my god, I love this. This reminds me of that beautiful story I read a while ago when there's like a gay bar and all the straight dude that comes in to only hit on lesbian women. And then there is this, this super buff gay dude who just aggressively flirts with these boys. He has like this super douche look, you know, tank top, ripped sunglasses. And it's absolutely beautiful. He's just a gay vindicator going around making creepy people uncomfortable. It is an absolute power play. Mother tries to spank teenager and regrets it. I am well into being an adult today, and this is a story of how I stopped my mother from ever spanking me again. My mother has always been fond of physical punishment. She is a pusher, slapper, hit with random objector, and a spanker. I got spanked a lot for things I did and things she perceived I did. She spanked me well into being a teenager as well. I was 16 or 17 at the time, and my wet towel from showering was on my bed. My mother always lost her mind over not hanging a towel properly, and frankly, this was a mistake I made often. Yeah, but. You you know, there are, there are different levels of mistake. You know, if you go from wet towel on the bed to, like, physical violence, <laughs> that's, that's a little bit of a wild step, no? She came in while I was dressing, saw the towel, and she immediately grabbed and spun me to start spanking. I will never know what devil took over, but it was a devil that had been needed much sooner in my life. Instead of crying out in pain, I said, Oh! Mmm! She was confused and asked, what, what sort of smart butt response was that? 
My response? <laughs> After so many spankings, I was wondering when I would start to enjoy it. She looked horrified, left the room, and I called down the hallway. Oh, come back! We can take our relationship to the next level! <laughs> I was never spanked again. Oh my god. <laughs> It is so sad that it was necessary to begin with. She sounds like an absolutely awful parent, but it's also such an incredible power play. It gives me a similar vibe to the things in the pub, you know? You just, like, out-creep the person who's the perpetrator, you know? It's kind, of, it's kind of beautiful. I do hope you got away from it. Parents like this are absolutely awful. I traumatized a cop with a tampon. <laughs> that seems to be a running theme. <laughs> the main trauma for police officers. <laughs> Tampons. When I was 19, I was driving home from a large city and was having a really heavy period. I lived about 45 minutes away and not 10 miles outside of city limits. I noticed a cop start following me. I was getting nervous because I had started speeding due to an unfortunate sneeze. Think little tampon meets four hours of heavy flow. It literally shot out like a bullet train. Oh no! Leaving a large bloody wake that coated my thighs and skirt. Okay, so the whole car just looks like a, like a murder scene. All right, got it. I tried unsuccessfully shoving it in while driving and keeping an eye on the officer Chris B. Bacon, but it was for naught. As predicted, the donut muncher flipped on his little flashy lights and I broke. I started wailing as I pulled over and huge tears started pouring down my face. This dude no doubt was peeved that he got stuck out in the country, where everyone knows everyone in text and radios them to warn them, but he clearly wasn't prepared for me. Chris P. License and register. Are you okay? Me. Howling and holding out bloody hands. No. <laughs> I am having my period and my stomach hurts and my head hurts and my tampon came out and I can't get it back in and this is a new dress and I ruined it. I just want to go home and cry some in order. Uh, Crispy. Uh, wh where is home? Me. Names town. Crispy. Uh, just try, try to drive safe. Practically trips over himself getting back into his cruiser. Honestly, that was probably one of my proudest moments. Edits, I know my post is similar to one that was on here earlier, and that's what prompted me to post my similar experience. We are different people with different experiences, but it's funny that they are close. This is so beautiful! I love that this seems to be a sort of universal experience. Tampon issues and police officer meets. <laughs> and then it just turns into instant trauma. I just imagine that scene where he first comes through the window and be like, Are you okay? Ah, oh, it's so beautiful. It's so beautiful. It's like something out of a movie. A proud misogynist meets child of domestic violence. Just discovered the subreddit and figured I would pull directly from an old post of mine and bring my own story from my cashier days to the table. I was ringing up a just past middle-aged man's groceries for him, and he happened to be cashing in on our weekly deals and coupons. He looked at me and flashed a wry smile and said, You can't beat that discount like you can beat your wife. This is, this is like your icebreaker for to- All right. Not willing to give him any rope, I pretend that I didn't get it. He said, You, you never heard that one. <laughs> you can't beat that like you can beat your wife. I said I didn't get it. I say this to anyone who makes a tasteless, demeaning joke. That's actually a really good way of doing it. It makes them so embarrassed. You will when you're married. That's how you double down? Are you kidding me? Your, like, edgy joke isn't well received and you take it even further and make it, like, personal. Oh my god, that's so bad. And as I'm sacking this guy's groceries, I act on one of my darker impulses. Yeah, I remember when my dad knocked my mother's teeth out. The dude's bravado shattered noticeably. Uh, oh, sorry, that wasn't very funny then, was it? He said with a nervous smile. Eh, you know, it feels good to rip someone's balls off every now and then. You know, a lot of things we talk about in these videos very much fall into the category of time and place, and that includes edgy jokes. Like, this joke in particular, I think, is pretty tasteless, no matter of the context, it's not even particularly funny. But even at that, it gets significantly worse when you take it outside of your own little local bubble, where everyone is fine with it, or at least you know that this doesn't offend anyone personally in the bubble, and using it at a stranger that you don't know have not experienced this themselves. You know, it is, it's absolutely wild. Don't, don't do this. And it sounds like this dude learned his lesson, finally. 
Oh, it's weird to touch a stranger's tummy. So when I was prego with my daughter, I had many strangers touch my belly without bothering to ask. That is so weird. <laughs> the first time it happened, I froze. Then after going home and stressing out the entire evening about it, naturally, I hated how it made me feel. So I figured out how I would handle it next time. The next time it happened, I just did that poo right back. I put my hand on their belly and waited until the inevitable moment when they looked up at me. <laughs> we then locked eyes, didn't move my hand and said, Oh, it's weird when someone touches your belly uninvited. I thought that's what we were doing. The face I got in return was so satisfying, and I felt like I got some petty revenge. I began hoping someone would do it so I could do it back. I encourage you to do the same if you are ever in that situation. I love that response because it couldn't even be twisted into something that would be over the top, you know? Because it's literally only doing the same thing that they did to just make them realize that, oh, this is really weird when it happens to you, huh? <laughs> that is so funny. Like, hmm. Yes, and they were touching each other's bellies today, are we? Oh, you got you got a nice one there, don't you? <laughs> Such a power move. Hell yeah. Yo, look rich. So my boss sent me to Staples to buy some office supplies since it was a slow day at work. I am checking out and the employee asked me if I want to donate to whatever thing they were promoting. I said no, and he then replied saying, are you sure? Not even a dollar or something because you look rich? Well, in that moment, I decided to shut him up. I am in all my black attire for work, long sleeve shirt and yoga pants. And you can see my scars from a terrible motorcycle accident I was in. I told the guy, how do I look rich when I'm dressed in my work uniform and heading back to work because I am broke? I said I was unemployed for two years because I almost died in a motorcycle accident and I'm finally able to walk again and be able to work again and get myself out of debt so no, I will not be donating. He looked like a deer in headlights and shut his mouth. <laughs> I sort of feel bad for the employee as well in this case because he's probably sort of forced to do this, you know? It's probably part of his role to just promote whatever thing they have going on at the register. But of course it feels a bit whack to be like, okay, I just got out of this struggling situation and this multi-billion dollar company is asking me to donate instead of just doing it themselves, <laughs> you know? Just do it as a tax write-off! Agree to sh- <laughs> So mixed feelings about employees being stuck in the crossfire with this kind of stuff, but uh, yeah, no, the situation is a bit, uh, is a bit whack, yo. You need to tell her she's adopted! So this happened years ago when I was in kindergarten. My mom is a redhead with the palest skin, and my dad is a dark-skinned first-generation Asian American. In skin color and tone, I look exactly like my dad, and growing up, I look nothing like my mom. One day, she dropped me off at school, but before she could leave, one of the other parents stopped her. Basically, this parent confronted my mom and told her she needs to stop lying to me, and it's not right for her to be holding back the information that I'm adopted. Okay. Okay, even going down the hypothetical rabbit hole that this kid is adopted and you come there as a concerned parent worried for the well-being of this child or whatever bullshit excuse you want to use. What if they actually were adopted? Hmm? Do you think this is how they wanted to find out? A Karen, like, half assaulting their mom in a parking lot, being like, YOUR CHILD IS ADOPTED! And then you have to explain that awkwardly on the way home, you know, instead of doing it, I don't know, at an age where the child can process it, or like, in the peace of your own home, or whatever, you know, th this? This is how you want the kid to find out? You know, even if you were correct about, like, the premise of the situation? <laughs> <laughs> Dear God! Oh my God! This woman is so clueless! What gives my mom the right to mess with me and make me believe she's my mom? Ew, that, that's a whack formulation as well. My mom, being the badass that she is, just looked at the other parent, drops her pants in the parking lot and says something like, Well, for starters, this C-section scar says that it's my kid. Everyone dispersed quickly and quietly after that. What gives my mom the right to mess with me and make me believe she's my mom is also such a gross way of saying it, isn't it? You're dismissing like every same-sex couple, every adoption, every family constellation that isn't purely biological based, you know? You're dismissing so much for no reason and then you're trying to put yourself on a moral high horse by also creating this potentially horrible situation for a child that would hypothetically be adopted and this is how they find out, Jesus, <laughs> this lady sucks! If I look up suck in the dictionary, it'll be a picture of this lady. <laughs> God damn. A male colleague said he would love some naughty harassment. 
Yeah, no, he's he's been reading too many fanfics. Right after the Me Too, and I worked in a very male-dominated environment. I'm a surgeon. One of my older colleagues said at a pre-round where there were us two and two nurses, both women. I don't understand the problem with Me Too. Personally, I would love some naughty <laughs> harassment. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Maybe you're, like, made-up version of it, perhaps. I dropped a pen on the floor and told him, Why don't you bend over and pick it up? I decided to go all out creepy and pushed my chair more out from the table and grinded in the chair and said some Oh, come on out, sweet boy, pick it up. Let me see your butt muscles work. Mm! The nurses laughed and he got so red and flustered. I just sat back at the table and asked, Was it what you wanted? Was it good for you? Just tell me next time you want to be harassed, okay? Needless to say, he never mentioned it again. I think the thing with a lot of dudes like this is that what they have made up in their little brain and equated to harassment isn't actual harassment, it's just a weird little fanfic that they have thought out and equated it to harassment for some reason. What they are thinking about is like coming into work and there's this young, hot new secretary giving you like a little eye and be like, hello there, sir, you look good today. And they think that is like the harassment people are talking about and be like, no, I would love some young secretaries hitting at me in the office, but that's not what it is. Like this kind of harassment very often is a mix between just naughty, unwelcome stuff and bullying. You know, it's made to push people down, ish bad, and it's not the right context, fam. But this is such a beautiful way of showing it. I, I salute you. I'll never assume someone is prego. Not my story, but I feel my father was definitely traumatized back. We were, dad and I, at a grocery store checking out. Something about my dad. He loves babies. All babies. Even the thought of babies. He is also a diagnosed narcissist and all that entails. So we are finally next, and the cashier was a little chubby in her tummy. Not a big deal, but sorta noticeable. Dad, as he had many, many times before, started cooing and baby talking at her, wanting to know how far along she was, etc. She looked directly at him and said, I had a miscarriage. Today was my first day back. Y'all, if a bottomless pit opened in front of my father, he would have stepped in without a word. I have never seen him more embarrassed. He started stammering out apologies, threw his wallet at me, and virtually ran from the store. At this point, she looked at me and said, I did a myth, Carrie. I've never even been prego. <laughs> and I'm sorry if I'm a birch. But I'm sick and tired of people assuming I'm prego and saying stuff and trying to touch me. People need to mind their own business. <laughs> oh my god, that is so savage. I never told my dad the truth! And, to my knowledge, he hasn't assumed a woman was pregnant since. Yeah, if that's the reaction, you know, it's, it's a little bit weird. And why the baby talk? The baby isn't hearing it, like you're talking to a grown woman. <laughs> Fam. My dad would double down and start questioning and shaming their diet and eating habits. The entitlement of a narcissist is a thing to behold. Yeah, that's also one thing. Like, you ask if they're prego and get all touchy, and even if they say no, it's like, Oh my god, then you need to do this and that and blah blah blah. Like, they're entitled to decide about your life or that they know better than yourself. Like, unsolicited advice rarely comes from a genuine place. I have noticed, at least in this instances. Like, it's it's uh, it's not a great thing, you know? You are a horrible person for not going camping. What is wrong with you? Said to me in front of about 30 friends at a party at my house some years ago by my then boyfriend's best friend who had had a beer or three. My boyfriend loved to camp. I would never go with him. My reply, well, AJ, I was violently kidnapped as a five-year-old child by my father. I was taken up on horseback into the mountains and left there with my father while I was hidden for two weeks camping. Overall, I was missing in a total for four and a half years before I was found and returned. So yes, heading into the woods with no easy way to get out still terrifies me. That's why I don't like to go camping. If that makes me a horrible person, then yeah, I am a horrible person and you can go F yourself, AJ. That pretty much shut down both AJ and the party, but I was absolutely furious and triggered. And why do you get so angry about it? That's the wildest thing. It's not even the person that is going camping. It's the friend of a person going camping. Like, you just inserted yourself into the relationship of your friend going at their partner for a very mundane thing. It's like a hobby thing. <laughs> and thinking you know more about it than the people who are literally in the relationship that have probably talked about this. 
Oh my god. I think there is some, like, main character confidence that ties into that when people try to, like, relationship explain people's own relationship back at them without even having all the information. It's like a very peculiar brand of confidence. My boyfriend knew about my history, but he had never told my best friend. He only told him that I didn't like to go camping. Yeah, and of course, like, why would he tell him? Like, it wouldn't come up. It's a very personal story, so that's just out of basic respect. <laughs> and then the other person assumes they know more than the people in the relationship that are, like, fine with it. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Creeped out a cat caller, and now he avoids me. A man recently moved into an apartment unit in the business district on my city, just a few doors down from my place of work. I had seen him in passing, and he would come into my retail job a few times. He'd introduced himself, told me he had just moved there from the Bronx, and always acted uncomfortably flirty with me. But I always ignored him and gave him that passive-aggressive automated customer service behavior to send him on his way. A week ago, while I was locking up and walking to my car, I heard someone whistling really loudly from above me. I turned and looked up to see this man leaning out of his apartment window looking right at me. Hey, pretty lady, finally done with the grand. Wanna come over and check out my place? I kinda laughed and waved him off, telling him no thank you and I am trying to head home. He continued to shout at me as I kept walking, trying to convince me to come up and we could have plenty of fun together. <laughs> Ooh, yes indeed, smooth as sandpaper. This is what negative riz looks like, y'all. I turned around and told him much more firmly that I am not interested and never will be. To which he responded, Come on, don't be a weirdo. That's weirdo behavior. <laughs> the irony, here's me yelling at people on the street to come into my apartment for some fun. But if you turn it down, you're the weirdo. Isn't that convenient? I felt the switch in me flip, and I don't know why I decided to do this, but I proceeded to start barking at him like a rabid dog, snarling, slobbering the works. When he tried shushing me, I really ramped it up till people passing by were staring at us, until he called me a freak and closed his window. Now, every single time this man sees me on the street, he crosses. When he sees me at my job, he leaves. <laughs> he won't even make eye contact with me if I happen to see him anywhere in public. I would consider it a win for sure. You traumatized the poor cat caller. Oh no. <laughs> that is such a power play to be honest, because he's of course hoping for the target to be a pushover or get like embarrassed to the point when you're being loud and in public to like agree to it just to get him to be quiet, etc. So like one upping that to the point he gets embarrassed and then he gets worried about being embarrassed in the future. So he just stays away. <sighs> That is so gorgeous. Beautiful. To be honest, I am surprised no one has got you prego emoji yet and made you his girl. <laughs> I guess I am lucky, smiley. You're asking why no one has gotten me prego? What the frick? It's probably because I had cancer and I had to get my uterus removed. Jesus Christ, what kind of opener is that? Is this Tinder? This seems about Tinder quality conversations, if I'm gonna be honest. Jesus Christ, what an opener. Why hasn't anyone put a baby in you? This is how you open conversations with strangers? No wonder you're single. Jesus Christ, man. I made them stop asking for grandbabies. My wife, 41F, and I, 34F, got married five years ago. And immediately her aunties and cousins began to demand that we have children. We held them off for a bit, but it became the main topic of conversation whenever we visited. As I am the younger of the two of us, it was assumed I would be the carrier. Well, after one auntie started guilt tripping us, I had finally had enough. I raised my voice so everyone could hear, and then reminded the auntie that my wife is a carrier for muscular dystrophy, and my doctor has repeatedly warned me against pregnancy because it has a high chance of killing me. The entire house went silent for a shocked moment. And then the auntie hesitantly suggested adoption, <laughs> and I asked, with what money? <laughs> no one has mentioned us having kids since. Family members like this always struck me so weird, like they try to bypass the parents will for having a kid or, you know, the people actually having to care for it, because I want to play with a child sometime in the family, and that goes before if they even want a kid or not. And then, like, to suggest the adoption right after. Oh my god, what a cringe fest. I'm assuming the aunt didn't offer to, like, pay for the adoption or anything like that either. They just want you to do it as a favor 
to her, which is heckin' weird, man. Draw a picture of my dad? You sure? My son was the one traumatizing people this time. This was two years ago on my son's first day of grade one. The new teacher asked the kids to draw pictures of their families. This teacher was very insistent that they draw all the family members and was fixated on my son and his picture of him and me, his mom. After a few goes at it, demanding he draw his whole family, Oh god, I hate this kind of stuff. My son agreed and she walked off. She came back a few minutes later and demanded an explanation for the grave and the ghost. Take a hint, lady, holy shit. My sweet six-year-old boy looked at her in the eyes and said, My dad is dead, so I drew him the best I could. I don't know what he looks like because I never remembered him. Oh my god! Well, I hope this teacher never did that ever again after that point. Jesus Christ, what a brave kid. What an absolutely brave kid to power through this BS assignment and also like stand up to your teacher in that way. What an absolute badass six-year-old, my god. I remember way too vividly assignments like this and they always are so awkward because anyone who hands out assignments like this just always assume that everyone lives in a perfectly normal heteronormative household and you know things happen you know parents can tragically pass away maybe you grew up with only one parent maybe you don't get along with both your parents maybe you had to escape your home because one or two of your parents turned out to be absolute abusive poopos giving out assignments like this have always really rubbed me the wrong way. And I don't want to get into personal specifics about this in particular, but there is a reason why I'm very passionate about, for example, insane parent content and raising awareness about these sort of topics. Assignments like this always had a very sour taste. And I remember sometimes even just lying to get through those kind of assignments when I was a kid. So, uh, yeah, no, I would love to see assignments like this just get thrown out the window. I absolutely despise them. They let a woman work here? I was working at an outdoorsy store as a cashier. We sold guns, candy, jerky, hunting things, fishing stuff, and camping equipment. In that order. I knew nothing about any of these topics, so I was obviously in customer service. Old man checking out, shaking his head. They let a woman work at sportsman store? That is crazy! <laughs> Well, you know, you can't spell, uh, woman without man, so, so, uh, uh, oh my god. Me. It's 2018. They let me do more than just shove out babies now. They even let me vote. What happened next is the real traumatizing moment. There was a few seconds of uninterrupted eye contact. I don't know what exactly my face did, but I do know that I opened my eyes so wide that I got air in my eye socket, and my boss came over and to ask why I had the laser eyes. The old dude hadn't moved that fast since 1957. Left the receipt in my outstretched hand. You act like an old butt troll and I'll be the Baba Yaga. Go ahead. I think that's really good, just teaching people that they can't make these really weird... Like, what did you even expect them to reply? Oh my god. Oh, they let women out of the kitchen this, this day and age. What are you talking about, Grandpa? Gee, who let you out of the home? Frick. Oh my god, you're so skinny! This is the comment I would hear a few times a week by the same new co-worker who was added to our pod. Since we had to work together, I tried getting to know her, but she couldn't stop telling me how skinny I was and how I look like a model. It started to drive me insane, so one day I was finally ready for her dumb comment. It was 8am in the morning. After she mentioned how skinny and good I looked that day, I said, Thanks. I got down to this weight after my dad died, which I ended up not eating for a whole week, and it's been hard trying to gain that weight back ever since. I never heard that skinny model comment again. I mean, it sounds like they're a bit envious or whatever, and maybe they're hoping it's actually a compliment, but stuff like this is always a bit iffy to comment on. It's one thing if someone has like gone to the gym a lot and they've gotten noticeably more buff, because that's usually something you do like on your own accord, right? And it's very purposeful, and that kind of stuff can be fine to comment on. Weight in general, always an iffy area, you know, unless you know that someone has been losing weight. You know, if you have a friend that tells you like, oh yeah, I've been moving more, and, I'm, and I've been watching my diet a bit, and I feel great. And then you can say, oh my god, yeah, you lost like 10 pounds, bro. That's freaking amazing, good job. You know, there's, there's a time and place, tossing out things unprompted, very often leads to very awkward conversations, you know? <laughs> it's not a good idea. This is not an email I ever expected to receive or send. 
The AI design of your email is clever but significantly lacks warmth. Would it be possible to be contacted by a human being moving forward instead of an AI? Many thanks. It's not an AI, I'm just autistic. See you next Friday. Oh my god. Oh. Customer snark immediately backfires. Oh god, if I was this person, I would just want to sink through the floor. Uh, don't rob pregnant women's bellies. <laughs> This is like a commonly occurring thing. What is it that makes people feel they can rub a pregnant woman's bellies? It's weird enough if another woman does it, but men who don't know you. When I was about 7-8 months pregnant, I was at a conference. A colleague from another agency, who I knew but not well, saw me at one of the after-work hour meet and greets. He reached out, rubs my belly and says, Ooh, you brought a friend! Without missing a beat, I reached out, smiled, rubbed his large beer belly and replied, And so did you! My boss saw the whole thing and doubled over laughing. That guy was lucky. I had put a strange man who reached for my belly in an arm bar a couple of weeks before. No touching the black belt, folks. But the best one was my friend who had some guy rubbing her belly in an elevator. She was around six months long. He asked when she was due and she replied, I'm not pregnant, I'm just fat. <laughs> she said the guy couldn't get off the elevator fast enough. <laughs> I would pay money to see that scene play out. <laughs> oh my god, that's so good. Uncle humiliated my weight gain for years till I turned the tables on him. This is something I've heard like surprisingly often, especially from family members that are like one or two generations older than the person being questioned. It's really weird. My grandparents always had coffee after church. Many relatives of our large family went. I had been thin all my life till I had to have a hysterectomy age 30 due to endometriosis. I gained 50 pounds in a few months. Uncle kept asking me how much I weighed in front of everyone. I ignored him. After a few years of this, I told him, I will tell you how much I weigh if you tell me how big your peepee -pee is. <laughs> Everyone bust out laughing and asking him how big his peepee -pee is. Yeah, uncle, tell us. My aunts were screaming with laughter. All the rude teasing from any of them stopped that day. I became too dangerous. No one wanted to poke this bear. I think that's a really smart counterpoint to any kind of bullying, even like more casual bullying or whatever you want to call this, you know, because it makes it too expensive. Bullies love people who stay quiet and don't retaliate. Like 90% of bullies will stop once you turn the tables. It's, it's really fascinating. Is that your kid? My mom is black and I am pretty pale. My whole childhood, we've had people ask us if she's my babysitter and if I was adopted, etc. When I was 14, a security guard just assumed I was a foster kid or adopted. He asked my mom how long have you had him. My mom told him since the day I stole him from the hospital as a newborn. His face turned bright red and he walked away. I eventually told him she's my biological mom, and he just smiled at me with an embarrassed look. <laughs> oh no. I mean, that strikes me as a typical situation where someone is trying to be polite about it, but they just like, mm, I don't know, they kind of trip over the politeness, you know? Educating preteen boys. So one of my good friends has three preteen boys. They of course are exploring what they can get away with, so they're always coming up with new names to call each other. The most recent was Douche Canoe. <laughs> Well, everyone was a douche canoe. All the time. We heard it all day. We really tried ignoring it, thinking they would find a new, more entertaining thing to call each other. But after three-ish days of it, my friend had had enough. I was over visiting, and one of the boys started going off about what a douche his brother was. My friend, in the most calm and collected manner possible, called all three boys into the room, asked them if they knew what a douche was, of course they didn't, and proceeded to describe in detail what a douches and why they are performed. We haven't heard that word again in almost two weeks. <laughs> Gorgeous. Unwanted comments as a disabled person. Not unfrequently, randos will say stuff like, What's wrong with your legs? It is obnoxious. I have ataxic cerebral palsy. I can walk. I am fortunate not to need a chair or crutches, but I am visibly physically disabled. I am a 43-year-old man for context for this story. I was on the bus home from work, and I get the usual What's wrong with your legs? from some middle-aged Karen type. I look her dead in the eyes and ask, how big are your bobs? What? She replies, how big 
are your bobs? <gasps> That's a rude question. I thought rude questions about other people's bodies was your thing. Goodbye. It's such a weird thing to ask, and the formulation is just wild. <laughs> what? Mock children with disabilities. I don't think so. I was in the break room of the local school bus company when one of the drivers asked me what route I drove. When I said I drove the special education bus, he started jerking and twitching his body while laughing. I just looked at him and said, you do realize you're talking to the mother of one of those children. He stopped mid-twitch, stammered something, and looked so embarrassed. It was one of the few times I had the perfect response in the moment. That is what we all dream about, you know, all the times when you're standing in the shower and you come up with this perfect response, like, damn, that meeting last week and that snooty comment, this would have been the perfect response to shut them up. But you did it in the moment, like an absolute queen. Well, laddies, lasses, and lasses, I do hope you found today's stories just as enticing, as satisfying as I did. And I hope to see you again in the very near future. Take care. Mwah.